Outside of trade rumors surrounding Jordan Poole, DeAndre Ayton, and a few others, we recently got word that the Bulls are open to reshaping their roster. We're going to talk about what reshaping the roster could look like and dive into the mailbag. All that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. If you want to follow me right off the top, you can do so at CEO Hayes, that's CEO H-A-I-Z-E. If you want to follow the show, you can do so at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform. But let's talk about it, right? Let's get into the content. So Sean Davini from Heavy.com recently came out and said the Bulls are open to reshaping their roster. And the biggest question is, what does that mean, right? Because again, that's kind of language that says something but doesn't really say a lot if we're just being frank um reshaping the roster could very well look at adding some key bench roles that really kind of reshape and reform how the chicago bulls play reshaping the roster could mean trading away some of your younger players for more solidified talent reshaping the roster could mean trading one or more of our big three uh so to say on this roster But what does reshaping it really mean? Now, in that as well, they said reshaping it around Zach Levine. And while a lot of Bulls fans understandably responded with, well, Zach Levine's not our number one, and he's not. We know this, right? But we don't have a number one on this team. And for the Bulls fans that immediately go to DeMar DeRozan, I'm going to say this, right? And this is not at all to make it seem, DeMar's impact on this Bulls team has been positive. We We saw and we what what he did in the fourth quarter, especially his first season with us, he didn't really have that type of fourth quarter impact this season, but he came back down to earth and was still the DeMar DeRozan that is one of the top scorers in the in, in NBA history, and only, what, 35 people scored more points than DeMar DeRozan? But let's, the, the thing in the way that it's shifted from some Bulls fans, not all, is that they act as if we added DeMar DeRozan to what we had going on, and then all of a sudden now we were a playoff team. That's not what happened. DeMar joined at a time where we did reshape the total roster. 90% of that roster was brand new to the team. So we got to keep that in, into fruition as well. Like I, When people say, like, well, DeMar carried you guys. No, DeMar did not carry this. DeMar was a, a super big part, especially in that first year, the biggest part of a reshaped total roster. But it wasn't all on. We didn't add DeMar to what we had going on when we were winning 20-something games, and all of a sudden we were winning 46 games. That's not what happened. Now, when we did see DeMar DeRozan, um, you know, without Lonzo Ball after he went down and Zach Levine was hobbled, we won eight out of 33 games. That's not all on DeMar. That's the team failed in that case, right? But when you look at reshaping a roster, you don't reshape a roster around a player that's about to be 34 years old. Now, that's not to say he can't be part of the reshaped roster, but it won't be built around DeMar DeRozan. And for all the Bulls fans that, you know, and some of them I really wonder how how long they were actual Bulls fans or if they were, you know, they came on because the Bulls were winning. You don't reshape your roster around a player that's 34 years old when you're that far away from competing for a title. And even in reshaping the roster, quote unquote, around Zach Levine, that means around his skill set. That doesn't mean that they think they're going to build a championship team with Zach Levine as the number one. It means we're going to reshape. We're going to try to have a team that, that is built more towards his strengths. And let's see what we can get. Right. And that's not to say that that's going to be successful in us getting to a championship team either. But it could get us closer, get us a little bit more modern. But the biggest question around that is, how much is this reshaping going to be? What type of reshaping are we going to do? Are we going to let Boots walk? Are we going to try to trade DeMar DeRozan? Are we going to try to reformat that way, right? And I think this all comes down, and as I've been talking about the last couple of days, is I think it really does come down to what happens with the Bulls draft pick this upcoming Tuesday, which will be live for here and over on Bleach Report as well. We'll be actually live on Bleach Report on the 15th and 16th, so make sure you guys are locked in for that. I can't wait. It's, it's getting real exciting around here. But, you know, with that being said, you know, so when, when you look at the Bulls reshaping, right, you have to look at what you can get. And I, I've, I've had some conversations both off and all online with some people that I really respect. And one was Big Kev. Shout out to Big Kev. Go and check out Chicago White Sox and Chicago Cubs Central as well if you're baseball fans. Um, but with that being said, you know, uh, you know, asking like, well, OK, um, well, what, what does that then look like, right? What, what, is that, what does that look like as far as the Bulls reshaping the roster? Um, and really, when you, when you boil it all down, um, 
the Bulls sit in a place right now where we are at the gates, if not completely in purgatory, right? And you want to try to avoid that. So when you look at what you can get out in the open market and what DeMar DeRozan's, for example, trade value is, DeMar DeRozan was still an all-star. And I think that DeMar DeRozan's trade value is one of those trade values that is always going to stay pretty even. Like, yeah, if he had more years, maybe you could net a little bit more back. Um, but it, it, I don't know. Like, AK has his work out to do. And, whether, and even in letting Vooch walk, you got to have a plan in how you're going to replace it. Because I tell you what, just inserting Andre Drummond into the starting lineup ain't going to change much for you. So, um, it's hey, listen, in reshaping, it's easier to reshape a roster when you have a lot of players, most of those players under contract. And so, the Bulls are in a place right now where I, I just don't know. So, you know, in, in, in this reshaping the roster thing that came out, so many people are focused on now. We'll see, man. We'll see. But one thing that does seem certain is that they, they plan on keeping Zach Levine. And I know that that's a lot of what a lot of Bulls fans don't want to see. They think Zach's the one that needs to be gone. And I kind of understand that to a degree. But this team is locked in. And, you know, especially when you see one of the things that the Bulls could have done is change coaches. And we know that we locked in. And when you see coaches like Monty Williams come available and it's like, damn, man. But the Bulls extended Billy Donovan. And, you know, for a lot of Bulls fans, even bringing up Coach Boot and I was like, to me, that's the same thing. Him and him and uh, Billy Donovan, damn near the same. Um, but uh, lack of adjustments there as well. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but the Bulls betting on Billy Donovan, betting on, on the front office, betting on everything that they did, you got to figure out a way to get it right now. And if you, it, since you've locked in with Billy Donovan as your head coach, that's what you got to deal with. That's one of the things you got to build around. So, hey, we'll see, man. This could be an offseason of a lot of change, but I still think when it's all said and done, this may be an offseason where a lot stays the same as well. But that's enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and get into the mailbag for today. Uh, the first uh, mail, uh, voicemail that we got is from Shay. What's up, Hayes? How you doing, man? This is your boy, Shay. You know, I was thinking, you know, a lot of NBA fans and mainly Bulls fans, we got to stop having this assumption. Just because a player does good on another team doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to do good on your team. And vice versa. Just because he does bad on one team doesn't necessarily mean he's going to do bad on your, on your team. You know what I mean? And the reason why I say this is because I'm hearing a lot of people say we should target DeAndre Aiden or we shouldn't. Look, it's neither here nor there for me. I don't really care if we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. But I'm going to say this. If we do, let's not assume that he's going to be just as bad here as he was in Phoenix. You know, he might, this might be the perfect place for him to flourish and, and see what he could really do. You know, that team had championship asp aspirations. You know, it went from rebuilding team to a team with Chris Paul and Kevin Durant and to championship aspirations from rebuilding team. So just in case of it, now I'm not saying I want him on the team. I'm not saying I don't. But if he were to come to the team, I, I would have an open mind to it due to the fact that, hey, he's a young guy. He's looking for a chance to redeem himself. And maybe, just maybe, he may pull away. Andrew Wiggins did when he went to Golden State. He may pull what Cal Kuzma did when he went to the Watch the Wizards. You know, everybody's a whole different person when they have when they have no more excuses left. Look at what Kyle Kuzma did compared to when he was with LeBron. You know, Brandon Ingram as well. Need I mention uh, Lonzo Ball before he got hurt? Anyway, tell me what you think. Peace. Now, I'm not saying I want him, but hey, if he – Comes to this thing, I'm willing to welcome him with open arms. He might do it and might show up and live up to his potentials. Peace. All right. Shay, uh, okay. Could DeAndre Ayton, what I basically took out of that, could DeAndre Ayton flourish on the Bulls? Here's what I could say. Change of scenery does work at times for players. I never want to overlook that and act like a change of scenery does not help players at times. It absolutely can and has in the past. But I don't think that the Bulls have the current situation. We, we haven't even worked the passiveness out of Patrick Williams yet. So I don't know if, if like, I, I have my doubts around the coach coaching system here and them trying to get the most out of a DeAndre Aiden. That's not to say that he can't. But when you ask if he can flourish here on the Bulls, my answer is no. Because I just don't think we have the coaching staff that is going to motivate and push a player like DeAndre Aiden. I don't think we even have the personnel, at least what, we don't, what we're shaped up to have right now on this team to even put DeAndre Ayton in the best situations. I don't see it. Um, but again, in a summer where we're reportedly going to reshape the roster, 
Maybe we reshape it in a way that we have some of that. But for me, you can't bring a player in like DeAndre Ayton and expect him to flourish if you don't have leadership. We still have no leadership on this team at all. And so that's something that can concern me. I'm not, I'm not one of those people who are going to say, oh, DeAndre Ayton's just, he's done. He's never going to get it together. No, he's 24 years old. He absolutely has a chance to still get it together in this league, but he does need to go to the right situation with the right players and staff that are going to help him develop and, and motivate him. And I just don't know if the Chicago Bulls can be that. Now, again, if AK and Eversley do make a move for DeAndre Ayton, if it does happen, regardless of me and some other Bulls fans hoping that it doesn't happen, if it does, then that's up to AK to then to support that player, to make sure he builds a roster that is going to support DeAndre Ayton because you know exactly what his faults are. And so, hey, hopefully that if they do decide to do that, they, they, they're, they're, they prep the team to be ready to get the most out of him and some of the other younger players on this team as well. All right, let's get into the next voicemail. This one's from Ant, the big homie. What up, Hayes? It's your boy, Ant, the big homie, a.k.a. the hood diplomat, a.k.a. Sir Benjamin Black. Now, I'm just calling because I'm trying to do a fair assessment of this team, bro, and we need a shooter to unlock everybody's potential. Now, what I got in mind is I know I keep on throwing DeMar DeRozan name out there because as you know, he has to go. Peace out, bro. Love, love what you did, but got to get your ass home. Clay had an awful series against Los Angeles Lakers. Maybe due to him going back home, the pressures of getting family tickets and, you know, just whatever mentally. I think it was more mentally than it was physically. If we can perch Clay, oh, I'm sorry, I said perch. I'm thinking about fish. I'm a fat boy. If we can poach Clay from Golden State, for DeMar and something, it's, I feel it's a win-win. Think about it. If you have Vooch, T-Wheel, Clay, Zach, Kobe, who's going to double team? Vooch will dominate in the post. He's one of the best low post presence centers that the game has, has seen in a while. You can't, who are you going to double team off of? And, you know, Clay is 33, so I know people are going to say, oh, he had injuries, but you know as a shooter, the last thing to go is your mechanics. So he can play easily well to 36 37 easily so i feel that will open up this offense dynamically you know they said they want to change the, the shot profile of this team adding clay to this team with the rest of them i think we're coming out the east let me know bro appreciate you always could the bulls get clay from golden state here's the thing and i'm going to talk about this very brief as much as the basketball media what have you believe that the Golden State Warriors now have to blow it all up, that the Golden State Warriors have to, you know, it's the end of a dynasty. The Golden State Warriors, much like the Chicago Bulls, are in a situation where they're more than likely going to bring most of that back. I don't see Dre opting out of that contract unless he has a deal already worked out with the Golden State Warriors to where he opts out and they re-sign him for maybe less initial money, but more years and more money over the length of that contract. Um, I don't see them chipping out, Clay. I don't, that they will never trade Steph unless he requests it. Steph could be in Golden State for his whole entire life, and they would never let him go until he requests that. So that's kind of what I think on that. I don't think that it's as – it's dire, don't get me wrong, because you have a team in which even if you did – uh, or Dre did opt out and you didn't re-sign him, you're still over the luxury tax. Even if you did trade Trey Clay, those two $100 million deals for, for, for Wiggins and Jordan Poole are going to hurt their cap flexibility no matter what they do. And, you know, I don't think that they're going to ship off either one of those players either. Now they could, um, but that's their youth movement. movement. And part of their issue to me as well is that their GM wanted to put his own stamp on the team. And so si re-signing those younger players that he brought in, right, where he made some mistakes in where he drafted Mooney, where he drafted Kuminga, James Wiseman draft. Like, so he doubled down on the players that did show some promise by giving them, rewarding them with big deals, but you did it early. You didn't even need to extend Jordan Poole when you did. Now, had you waited an additional season, you probably would have paid him considerably less, probably more like $95 million than $140 million after how he just performed in these playoffs. So I don't think that, that it's as – I don't think that the Golden State Warriors are going to all of a sudden start selling off all their veteran pieces. I don't think that. I don't get that vibe and that feeling, despite, like I said, what some of the national media would have you believe. But I could be wrong with that as well. But I don't think that the Bulls would be able to match some of the other teams' offers. For example – Golden State, I mean, not Golden, uh, uh, Boston could absolutely, depending on how things end with them, 
be looking to add Clay, right? Especially with the Jalen Brown thing. You got to look at the New York Knicks. Always interested. Could they pair Clay with Jalen Brunson, right? Clay didn't have a good playoff series either. But you got if they did decide to do that, I just look at other teams that have more draft picks available. And considering then if the if the if the Warriors are shipping off a player like Clay, they're building towards the future, and the Bulls just don't have those first round picks to include in that. But maybe I'm wrong. I guess we'll see. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from Michael Korn. Hey, Hayes, Mike Korn here. I have a question. Uh, last year, going to the playoffs against the Bucks, everyone kind of dreaded that playoff series, thinking that we'd get totally dominated uh, by Giannis and company, and we got smoked. It was a great one game with uh, Demar, of course. Hey, this year, coming to this season, or in the season, seeing the stretch of games the Bulls had against some really good teams, even if they were individual games, just how good they could be, at least in, in, uh, against the uh, best in the league. My question is, coming into the playoffs now with the uh, remaining four teams, what do you think the Bulls' chances would be if they were still in it, hypothetically, of course, but if the Bulls matched up against, uh, or matched up against the four teams now, would the Bull, would you have that dread, uh, would you fear like, man, they're going to get clobbered again? Or do you think there's a reasonable chance that the Bulls could either win a couple games in those series or actually take any of the series uh, against the uh, uh, Lakers, Nuggets, uh, Heat, and um, you know, Celtics? Uh, just I had in my head that the Celtics beat uh, the 76ers that they play tomorrow. Whoops. Oh, crap. Uh, so if you don't mind giving me your thoughts on the five teams, uh, you know, including the 76ers who – uh, the Bulls beat uh, in a great game. And, of course, the next day or day after, they uh, look like a bunch of crap against them at home. And uh, that, that was the final up and down of the season, I think, for me. But in any case, uh, how do you think the Bulls will do against the five teams uh, right now that are still vying for a chance to play in the championship? Hey, thanks. All right, we had to combine a couple of voicemails there from Michael Korn. Uh, but uh... – what, how do I think the, the Bulls would stack up against the teams left? So Philly, um, I think that they can maybe take a game from Philly, but I wouldn't pick them to win the series. Boston, again, maybe still a game or two if we were fully healthy, but I'm not picking them to win the series. Denver, hell no. Definitely not picking them to win no series against Denver. The way that Denver's been cooking in this playoff series, the Bulls will get absolutely cooked up. And the Los Angeles Lakers, with AD playing uh, more consistently, that's that's tough. Now, I, I do think I would give the Bulls because I would give any team a chance to win a couple of games. But in a series against any of those teams, no, the Bulls aren't there. And, and this playoff series has kind of highlighted how important using your depth is and developing that depth. Right. Like going to like a player like Lonnie Walker, who was out of the rotation, became a big piece in that playoff series for the Lakers. So Billy Donovan has some and the coaching staff has some work to do to really develop these players here. And I think we're seeing the separation between other teams and have the depth, the balance, or the coaching that's just way above where the Bulls are right now. And so, no, I wouldn't pick the Bulls to win any of any series against those teams. That's just my personal opinion. But they could probably get a couple of games. They ain't winning no series, though. We can probably get a couple of games. But all right, let's get into the last voicemail for today. This one's another one from Shay. What's up, Hayes? How you doing, man? Look, I know that you may not have heard this, but I'm so sick of people talking bad about Zach Levine or this and that, uh, comparing them to Devin Booker. Let me tell y'all something, especially y'all old people that say Devin Booker is better. Did y'all know that Devin Booker didn't even make his first playoff appearance until Chris Paul got to the team? Before then, the uh, Phoenix Suns was a consistent rebuilding team. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand that Zach Levine, that Devin Booker has made the playoffs consistently ever since that final to run, but to just say Zach Levine is not a good player or a complete player or not the guy that we should be building around because he only had one playoff appearance is kind of blasphemous, especially since he hasn't really played with too many stars besides DeMar DeRozan and Vucevic. And then on top of that, before he even got here, he wasn't necessarily on a winning team in Minnesota. So... That's all I got to say about it. Anyway, tell me what you think. Peace. Zach Levine versus Devin Booker debate. Um, Here's what I'll say. Is that I think that they did start off very close to each other. I think the difference is, is that 
Devin Booker has shown that, yeah, he didn't make a playoff series or win a playoff series either until Chris Paul came there, but he learned the lessons from that, and those playoff uh, runs that they went on, he has developed into a hell of a leader, a hell of a player, a hell of a clutch player, and he it has pushed him above Zach Levine so far in what we've seen. Now, we see performances like Zach did against Toronto, for example, in that first playing game, and it looks great, right? But we don't see that consistently from Zach. Zach has that potential in him. He's always going to be a flawed. He's not a, he's not a complete, not say not complete. He's not a player that you can just, as of yet, you can just say, hey, go out and win this series for. Like, that's what Jimmy's done, right? That's what other players have done. And Zach hasn't shown that yet. And I think Devin Booker has taken what he's learned from Chris Paul and learned from going on those playoff runs. And he's just a so much more complete of a player right now. Um, but that's not to say that Zach couldn't get there as well. But we need to go. We need to have a better team around, and we need Zach to then develop as a leader. And I just don't know at 28 if I'm still expecting that from Zach Levine. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Anything's possible. Not to, not to completely poo poo on it, but you know, Devin Booker still, I think now has completely separated himself from Zach Levine as of right now with just how he's been able to kind of develop in that leadership role and and be develop more of that killer instinct more consistently than Zach Levine has. But let's see what a fully healthy season from Zach Levine, hopefully next year. Maybe that develops in him as well. But that's it. That's my time for today. Uh, make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, you want to leave a text message and or voicemail for mailback episodes, which we got two more voicemails that I didn't get a chance to play just because of the length of this episode. They'll be on Monday's episode. But the number to do so, 773 773- 270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media. Media.